We are getting you sent for spring practice here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football across the nation. And why not go to the very top, the Alabama Crimson Tide? And of course, for that conversation, we bring in Stephen M. Smith of TouchdownAlabama.com. Stephen, how you doing today? Doing fantastic, Mark. Doing well. Uh, this time around next month, the Crimson Tide will be out there, you know, getting the pads back popping because their spring practice starts on the 19th. Always great to have you on, Stephen. Uh, before we dive into a couple of positional previews, there's a few uh, members of the 2020 team that will not be participating in spring drills because they have entered the transfer portal. Uh, those two individuals just so happen to be Ben Davis, an outside linebacker, and Ale Cajon, an inside linebacker. And uh, for both of those two, I wish those two young men the best. It was just not meant to be here for them in Alabama. Ben Davis came in 2016 as a five-star from Gordon High School here in Alabama. His father was a tremendous legend. I mean, Wayne Davis, who led the who was the all-time career leader in tackles, 327, and Bama fans just really thought that Ben would be able to materialize and carry out that name that his father brought in and was so great for, but you know, unfortunately, it didn't pan out for Ben. Uh, he did earn his degree. He did get, you know, two national championships in 2017 and 2020. So he did gain some hardware. So hopefully he can find a place where he can be, you know, an impact guy. And, of course, Ali Kaho, he came in 2018 from Nevada. He flipped from Washington to Alabama in the 2018 class that gave Alabama a top five signing class. And he was phenomenal on special teams, covering punts, covering kickoffs, blocking punts. And so many people wanted him to birth into being a great, you know, inside linebacker, whether it be a middle linebacker or a weak side backer, but just didn't quite uh, manifest for him also. So just two guys that have a lot of character, a lot of things to offer. But in Alabama, you know as well as I do, Mark, you got to pop quick here. And when you don't pop quick here and you get sort of buried in, you know, on the depth chart, so to speak, it, it, it's hard to kind of press your way through sometimes. Ben Davis with uh, seven total tackles in his Alabama career with one sack. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love each and every day. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our aim. That's our goal. That's our mission. Helped by the likes of Stephen M. Smith of TouchdownAlabama.com. The Tide goes to uh, spring practice in mid-March, and we will uh, lean on Stephen to help us break down some positions. So, of course, so much focus, Stephen, on the departures of Devontae Smith, Mac Jones, Najee Harris, the star talent. But the guys that allow all that space and that ability to shine is, of course, up front. So. Uh, what is being lost? What are the personnel gains and losses along the offensive front? And your your look at the offensive line as we head toward March? Well, you lose three very linchpin starters on your offensive line. You lose a, a phenomenal left tackle and Alex Netherwood, a five-star when he came in, in 2017. And a, and a guy that's got not just the size, but great length, great athleticism, a very extremely high football IQ. And it's just a big time road grader as well as a pass protector. So you lose him. You lose a Landon Dickerson at center who came in in 2019 as a transfer from Florida State. And you would think this young man played four years at Alabama because of how well he came in and he jailed and he fit. And it was just a seamless transition for him and how much the, um, the players around him loved him how much the coaching staff loved him, how much Coach Saban loved him, because when he became the starting center in 2019, I mean, he brought a toughness. He brought a nastiness. He brought a physicality. He brought something that Alabama just did not have in 2018. And the last two years with Ramsey Dickerson, you have seen the run game, that you saw the pass protection hit new levels here for the Crimson Tide, and of course, Deontay Brown at left guard, a guy that at, uh, at 6'4", you know, 300, uh, 364 pounds, we see the, the body, the, the, the road grader, the massive run blocker that he is, as well as doing some outstanding things in pass protection. So you lose three guys, Mark, 
that have incredible experience, that have incredible athleticism, that when they started, you saw this offensive line really, truly discover an identity for itself, and it's going to be very difficult to replace those three guys. So when we look at the replacements, Stephen, um, who would uh, be the guys that uh, you would most likely point to to being ready to take that next step? Well, absolutely. When you look at left tackle, I would go with Evan Neal. I think, I think Alabama would take the 6'7", 360-pound Evan Neal and flip him from right tackle to left tackle. Alabama's got three scholarship quarterbacks in the roster. All three of these guys are right-handed in discussing Bryce Young, Paul Tyson, and Jalen Milrow. So you would like to have somebody to uh, uh, protect the blind side of those three quarterbacks. Evan Neal fits the bill. A guy last year that did not give up, did not give up a sack at all uh, this past season in his play for the Crimson Tide. So Evan Neal uh, going from right tackle to left tackle to replace Alex Netherwood. At that center position, I look at Chris Owens. When Landon Dickerson got hurt, a lot of people were afraid of, can Chris Owens come in and handle that spot and handle that role? And he did an outstanding job. And this is somebody that has a wealth of experience at, le- at-, at-, at offensive tackle, at offensive guard, at center, and at tight end along that offensive front. So Chris Owens gives you that, that experience. He gives you the football intelligence. He gives you the size. He gives you the continuity. He gives you the football mindset. So I look at Chris Owens at that center position. And then uh, at left guard at that spot, you can, you can look at, you know, maybe a Tommy Brown at that position. He comes over uh, from modern day high school in uh, California. He's got some experience in the system. So that there's Tommy Brown right there. But even that there could be a situation where, Mark, we could see, you know, maybe one of these freshmen, whether it's a, whether it's a, uh, a Tommy Brockemeyer or a J.C. Latham or a Terrence Ferguson Jr. that could take that spot there at left guard, replacing one uh, Deontay Brown. One thing for certain, Mark, is the talent here. The talent at Tuscaloosa, you've got Doug Marone, who is replacing Kyle Flood as the offensive line coach. He's going to have a lot of talent to mix and match and choose from. Yeah, all three uh, incoming offensive linemen that you just mentioned are early enrollees in Latham, Brockenmeyer, and uh, Ferguson. And uh, Latham and Brockenmeyer, two of the top five players in the country, regardless of position, according to the 247 Sports Composite and the one in two tackles in the country in the 21 class. And Ferguson, top two at his position of guard. So a wealth of talent uh, waiting to, to jump right in if given the opportunity. Uh, Stephen M. Smith, touchdown, Alabama.com. Stephen, we always appreciate the breakdown and would love to have you back to uh, get us set uh, even further for Alabama spring practice here on what, uh, March 19th, correct? March 19th, man. They're getting ready to roll. All right. Good to talk to you, Stephen. Absolutely. Thank you.